Today, we interview the franchise brand developer for OxyFresh, Mr. Matt Klein, and we ask him who is truly the right fit to buy an OxyFresh franchise. People say they want to buy a franchise, but at the end of the day, who should buy a franchise and who should not buy a franchise? You might think you're a good fit, but are you really a good fit to buy a franchise? Some shows don't need a celebrity narrator to introduce the show, but this show does. Two men, eight kids, co-created by two different women, 13 multi-million dollar businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thrive Time Show. Yes, yes, and yes. Thrive Nation, on today's show, we have a very special guest. So, so fine, Matt Klein, a man who, um, it's not an insult, uh, he has not yet started a cult, but he could, using just his good looks. Matt Klein, welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. We're getting a nice little snowstorm here in Colorado. Oh, beautiful. So everyone's freaking out, trying to figure out how to get home. Is it, are, and, uh, are you yeah, looking out the window right now? Do you see snow? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been snowing for like 48 hours straight. So. And am I on your cell phone right now? Uh, am I on your cell phone? You, you are. Can it, will you do me a favor? When we get off, will you email me a picture or text me a picture of what you see? I'll put it on the show notes. People want to see it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I certainly can. Well, today we're talking about your role as a franchise brand developer. And uh, a lot of people don't know what that means. They don't understand what it means to be a franchisor, as OxyFresh is. So let's start off with what's the difference between a franchisor and a franchise E? Yep. That's a very common kind of back and forth that people don't really realize. So a franchisor is the, um, is the, <clears throat> the overseeing company. So they're the corporate headquarters. So like every franchise, like a McDonald's or a Jimmy John's, um, they have a headquarters where they basically have all their support people and their platforms, everything that allows their franchisees to operate and have the systems in place where if you go to each one of the locations, they're the thing. So like the franchisor, I'm in the office in Denver, Colorado. That's where our ownership is. That's where our scheduling center is. That's where our IT department is. That's where we do our training and development. So everything is right here in our home office. The franchisor supports the individual franchisees in them running their businesses. How involved should a franchisor be in terms of, like, I guess that's a, that's a poor question. How involved is OxyFresh with the franchisees? Because I know sure. every, every, there's some brands that run it like a military operation where they are on you daily, harassing you, making sure you get all, it's, it's very micromanaged, very intense, very, Hey now, buddy, how you doing? It's Monday. It's nine o'clock. How you doing? And some of them are more at an arm's length. Mm -hmm. Some of them provide no coaching at all. Some, I mean, what's, how does OxyFresh do it? Yeah. So we're a fully supportive, fully functioning franchise. So from the very initial stages all the way to where, you know, five years in, uh, we'll have complete support. So there's certain things we can't do, right? So we're not going to go in your local market and knock on doors, but we're going to provide a huge amount of marketing support in your local area. We're going to provide all the training um, aspects of the business, not only for you as a franchisee, but also down to your individual technicians. Um, we're going to help with things like vendor relationships. So instead of you trying to go out and figure out who the best vendors are to work with, we would have already negotiated with those Quick. vendors so you get a better deal um, to be able to run the business. Whether Quick that's question here. Sorry. Card processing. Quick question here. Yep. Um, I just want to some listeners out there are very, very concerned. I, Andrew, the, the show, if you noticed for a moment, it, it seems as though Matt's kind of taking the show to a weird place. I was making sure. Dark. Yeah. Did you say bender relationships? Like bender, like bender, barely newer, or bender like an alcoholic like or a, gender a bender? bender. <laughs> when you, I mean, bender what, what are you saying? Nope. So like our vendors. Oh, vendor like with a V. Vendors. Oh, that clears it up. Vendors with a V. I had so many questions. Well, so many. Sorry about that. You're okay. getting into vendors okay. with your franchise door. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So you, um, like credit card processing, you've already negotiated that relationship. 
maybe mass e- mass emailing? Do you already have a relationship in place for that? Yeah, so we have the ability to, you know, automatically have uh, connections and, and interactions with uh, existing customers. Certainly, um, we have the ability to reach customers that are not, you know, our, our customers yet that we will. So, you know, there are, like you mentioned, there are franchise companies out there where you just buy the equipment and then you're on your own. Yeah, there's franchise out there where you can buy the franchise, um, and it's more like a license. So they give you customers, but then they take a huge per- percentage of each one of those jobs you do. Right. So we're of uh, the the thought and and. and of the franchise where we want to give you the support platforms and the resources and the support and the cleaning method to grow your business to whatever degree that you want. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's no limitations. The only one there is your effort. So, so we're a little bit different in that from the, the other ones that I just mentioned. So let's make sure I'm getting this right. I, I call you cause I'm thinking about being, becoming a franchisee. I want to, I'm going to buy my own business, own one essentially. I call you and you are going to provide for me, and Andrew will put notes on the show notes. I'll make sure I'm getting this. You're going to provide a call center to answer my phones. You're going to provide all the vendor relationships. You're going to already know the best company I need to use to buy polo shirts, to buy business cards, to cleaning materials, all that stuff. And you, you've already thought through all that. So what do I have to do? That if I own, if I own, I mean, Josh, isn't that a fair question? I mean, if, if I'm if, I, if you bought an OxyFresh today, wouldn't you want to know what do you have to do? Absolutely. So what would you have to do if you if you sold Josh? Because, you know, uh, John in our office has reached out to you about buying an OxyFresh now in uh, the Dallas area. And uh, uh, I feel safe in saying that because this show is going to come out here well after he owns one. But I can't say it yet, but he's excited about it. He's ready to go. I think I'm going to partner up with him and do, and do one with him there. But, um, you know, if John buys one, he secures his territory, what does he have to do? Sure. we got to start from ground level. So we need to get John the training and support knowledge to be comfortable in what he's doing, being able to speak the language of carpet cleaning, yeah. being able to understand how to train his then employee. So the first thing we have to do is develop the individual franchisee with the knowledge and skill set to be able to run the business locally. And then when we get to a point where that is you know, when we've gone through the, the, not only initial training, but also the ongoing training, like all the way down to being able to book a job, all the way down to being able to actually run the scheduling software. Even though we have the scheduling center booking job, we still want the franchisee to be able to basically run that thing as if they were booking jobs. Got it. Right. So we're going to give them all the, the adequate training, and then they're going to want to use those tools to be able to then develop their business. Right. We're going to develop the, the online presence. Right. There, you know, John's going to want to get those Google reviews in that local market to grow. He's going to want to basically hire people. He's going to utilize two things. He's going to utilize his knowledge base. And he's going to be able to utilize our, our online training support, which is Oxford University, to be able to get that employee to a point where they can constantly go into people's home and do jobs. Right. If Joe and John are not able to actually do that, then they can send that that person to Denver, and we'll train that person for free. So we don't we don't have a one size mm. fits all. We take each individual franchisee, we take what their skills are already, and then we try to fill in the holes or fill in the gaps. Now, Matt, we have three. Right? John might have an excellent source of sales, but maybe not marketing. So you so we just want to fill the gaps. You're filling the gaps. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to try to fill in the gaps. We've got three minutes, three hot questions. I'll go first. Josh goes second. Andrew third. Here we go. These are rude questions, tough questions. This is. What kind of wacko, what kind of sicko, what kind of psychotic, <laughs> just weird nut job of an individual should not buy a franchise? Because, you know, you're saying, so, so, you, so you want to buy a franchise? Okay, let's see if you're a good fit. Who should not call you? Yeah, people that know it all. That's a tough one because the environment's going to be changing all the time. If you've already known everything there is to know about this industry and how to grow, then you should start your own business because I can tell you as a franchise with a lot of resources, we're still learning every day and growing and changing on the fly, right? So be willing to change. Be willing to know what's going to happen. Um, you know, that's a big one for us. Are you um, going to bring the British guy with you to the conference in, in December? Uh, I can. You should. <laughs> Here's the deal. You, you took my best friend. You, you guys hired away. <laughs> My best friend, JB, mm. founder of OxyFresh, he calls me and says, we're thinking about hiring you know, your best friend. 
Andy Matherin, who you spend the most time with, the man with five kids. You have Andy. five kids. I mean, I'm not going to live long enough to find another guy who's the same age as me with five kids. That's, that's a dad. He's also that's, British. Yeah, he's British. I mean, beautiful guy. Just eye candy. Great guy. You take Handsome. him away. You pay him well. He doesn't want to leave. It's a fun o- office environment. A lot of former Division One athletes up there working together. The whole thing is jackassery. I'm tired of it. So, uh, when you, can you bring him back? Can you bring him down here for the conference in December? Will you bring him? Please. Yeah, I could bring Andy. I mean, we can have like a whole – if you're talking about starting a cult, you can have Jonathan, he's got five kids, you have five kids, Andy's got five kids. Yeah. And then we have Mike and our development office has five kids. I think that might be the number. Bring the, bring it down. Bring the fabulous five times five. We'll have a big tribe. Josh, what's your rude question for Matt Klein? Uh, so my, my question would be, who would who is a good fit? And since Clay asked, who wouldn't fit? So you said the know-it-all doesn't <laughs> fit. So who is a good fit for an Oxy First Frame? Oxy Fresh franchise. Say that three times fast. Oh man! Yeah. Well, I say Oxy Fresh franchise all the day, so I can do that. Nice, my client. Nice, all day. nice. Uh, huh. But, but yeah, you want to look at someone that's basically the opposite. Someone that is open to learning, right? Because we are not going to be the same company in two years that we are today. We're going to continue to evolve and develop new strategies. And you got to be as a franchisee willing to get on that train with us, so we can take advantage of those things and not use it as a, a roadblock. Yeah. Um, you got to be effort, right? If, if you know that your competitors are hitting a certain benchmark, whether it's weekly or monthly or yearly, you better put in the effort to either meet those benchmarks or exceed those benchmarks. Because if they're able to do it, there's no reason that you can't do it, right? Because we have a better cleaning system. We have more support. We have all the things here for you. But if you're not using those to your advantage, then it's going to be tough to really kind of grow your business beyond just the normal kind of mom and pop shop. Awesome. And then the uh, I guess the other side. So I was a, a good bench warmer on freshman basketball. Do I have to have played Division One basketball? Just want to clear that up real quick. <laughs> you absolutely do not have to. We oh, have okay. Many people here that have not. We just we just happen to have many people that have as well. Oh, okay. Now, Andrew, we got thirty seconds left. Rude question for Matt Klein. Ask anything you want to ask, but make it offensive. Oh yeah. Okay. So All Clay right. asked the, the 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 who's the worst fit who can't have an oxyfresh. And Josh asked, who's the best fit? Mm. Now, what about where's the best fit? So oh, you, if, where's if, the best fit? If you oh. have a guy maybe who's like, okay, that's not me, to Clay's question, and then you have a guy with Josh's questions like, oh, that's me, but what about location? Geographically, where do you have to be located, or do you have to be located in an, an available location? You do not. That's a good question. You do not have to be located in a territory that is open. We have like myself, I live in da- downtown Denver. My territories ter- are in Boulder and Fort Collins. So we you have cloned yourself to run them kind of off site. We don't need a business, but there are a few key places that like, it's shocking to me that we don't have a franchise yet in Sacramento. Mm. Like Sacramento is mm. an awesome area, mm. but that doesn't mean that you can't own a business um, in Nevada. You can't mm. own a business in Connecticut. I mean, there's all sorts of territories. There's about 300 territories left in the United States. There's 400 locations that are up and running right now. 400 locations. There's 300 left. More are not available than are available. Yep. And so if you're interested, just go to oxyfresh.com right now. Fill out the form. Go up there. Give them a call. Matt's going to have to send you a franchise disclosure document, which is regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. Oh, wow. So you can look at this. I mean, you, you, I'm just saying there's no smoke and mirrors. There's no jackassery. There's total financial disclosure. After they do a call with you, if it seems like, if it seems like it's a good fit for both parties, they're going to discover uh, – they're, they're, they're going to schedule a discovery day so that you can discover – the ins and outs of the business and decide whether you want to buy it or not. Ask all the rude questions, see numbers, see systems, meet the staff, meet the team in Lakewood, Colorado, just outside of Denver, very near the Red Rocks uh, Amphitheater. It's just awesome. And if you're out there, I'm just telling you, if you're out there thinking about buying a franchise and, and you, you're, you're willing to submit yourself to implementing systems in exchange, to, in exchange for freeing yourself of financial limitations – Oxyfresh may just be a great fit for you. And Matt Klein, how much are the franchises today? How much does it cost? The franchise fee, the upfront investment is thirty-eight thousand nine hundred yeah. to include your equipment, product, territory, and training. And then best practice is to have somewhere between twenty to twenty-five thousand for available, accessible funds for operating. Yeah. Things like insurance and local marketing, vehicle, employees. So you want to have around sixty to sixty-five. Again, thirty-eight nine upfront. Oh, uh, Matt, you're, you're beautiful. I, I, I hate to wrap up today's show, uh, but seriously, when we get off, will you text me a picture 
of what you see outside because I want to put it on the show notes. The listeners are going to go to Thrive Time Show. They're going to click on this show, and they want to see the show notes. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Beautiful. Man, I've got to tell you one more. Coming one, to you one, right one, now. One more final thing. Uh, you know, Kanye released his new album, Kanye West, his new album, uh, Jesus is King, and I yeah. just wanted to share this with you. You look a lot like Kanye West. I've heard that. I mean, it's remarkable. It's, I've it's heard that shocking. so many times you won't even know. It's outstanding, really. I just it's the listeners out there need to Google search Matt Klein right now, Matt Klein Oxyfresh, and then Google Kanye <laughs> West and just do a side by side comparison. And I'm talking about you're looking in a mirror right there, Matt Klein. You're looking at that Kanye West. I mean, it's like the same person. It's just beautiful. There's a lot of similarities there, and you'll see that. <laughs> All right, you take care, my friend. Have a great day. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. Thanks. And now, without any further ado, three, two, one, boom.